Hello, Nomad Cult, and this is um, a workflow video for the vertex materials with the new tri planner um, option here. So, this is the only 191 video. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so I'm starting from the beginning and I'm just doodling here a little bit, so maybe I add a box. So, so show the wireframe and let's change a little bit the topology, a little bit more subdivision. So I think this is okay. And maybe here like this and I press validate. So the next thing is here I'm using the, the face group thing here and you see here now different face groups on, on this uh, cube. So I change it here. So auto validation is on and I give it only one face group. So the next thing is now we need more face groups. So I use here the rectangular tool and here in the filter settings at the moment here is front vertex only active. So this is nice. So let's and symmetry off. So without symmetry, so let's Um, we have to go back and here I change it like this here and now front facing vertex only. So here a new face group, maybe here. So this is not nice. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's only for demonstration. Okay. So I'm not talking about the tools uh, too much because uh, you have to do it uh, yourself or with the other tutorial video. So for this here, I have an um, um, uh, inflate scale tool here. In fact, it's um, the inflate tool here and you can change the stroke mode uh, to lock radius here. So I change now my tool. So it's called inflate scale and here the stroke mode is in lock radius and the filter uh, no pressure and the fall off is a flat fall off. So okay. And here you see here the option in the shading menu to activate the face groups to see it. So maybe like this. And now the inflate tool here is active and so you can brush here on your face groups and it only affects the face group. So yeah, like this here. It's also possible to use the sub function. Maybe like this. And so. So we got a nice cube here with different areas. So here in the um, multi-resolution 
menu you find here the option for linear subdivision or for keep sharp borders this is also new so i activate the sharp borders and i subdivide the mesh uh, once more so then it gets a little bit smoother and the next thing is we need to, for the vertex um, materials here more resolution so So like this, so I remesh the whole thing and you see here now our mesh density like this. So I turn now the wireframe off like this. And now the materials come into place. So I choose now my layer triplanner paint thing. So. And I choose a material. So and I add a layer here. So at the moment the grimy metal is active. So when I brush here, sorry, I have to change here the face group thing. You see here the, the effect on this. There's for the brush tool. Here is also the filter setting um, for the face group here. So at the moment it's on, only on the face groups. So when here the shading is without the face groups and this setting here is an, on auto, the whole mesh gets affected. When this setting here is on on, then only the face groups are affected so like this so you get it the effect only on the face groups so like okay so the next thing is um, let's choose a, a different material so there are such surface materials here so I pick one and I check here in the alpha settings what it does. So it's called um, carbon stairs is this thing called. And I activate the preview. So here you see the scaling of the whole thing. And I think we, we need um, this smaller, so like this. And this here is the effect of the of the whole thing at the side menu here you see here the intensity is at the moment at zero so i increase the intensity maybe 200 percent and let's see what happens you get something like this here it's too much so maybe like this and some patterns here maybe it's better to use mirror mirror so this is what you get when you use mirror mirror and the other thing is repeat repeat and it's also possible here to set it uh, to the local position so here on this area it's not so nice there's um, i think there's a small problem in the texture but it's very um, it's not so easy to get it 100% so let's use a little bit more intensity so like this and brush it as i said you have also control here via the layer and the offset uh, slider to control the displacement here okay and maybe i don't want painting at the moment so here I use at the moment uh, not the textures here so uh, ah, because I use here post-processing so that's the shading okay so let's use the other one here are such um, wire meshes here 
So um, to create such effects here. And let's use the other one. Maybe this. And use here the sub function. Yeah, a lot to play. Um, so preview, scaling, uh, this one is a nice one. So here you see at some positions um, the backside comes through the mesh. So it's no problem when you uh, voxel remesh the whole thing or you use the smooth tool here. Let's try to smooth it a little bit out on this on these positions. <coughs> so I think this is okay. Let's test such a thing here. Yeah. You can apply here different materials like you want. So with or without color. So such technical patterns are also very nice. So you can get here such um, such panel line effects. So let's change a little bit the scaling. So like this here. Or in the opposite direction. Like this. Okay, the next thing is maybe the painting. So um, we can add a new layer. And now we need other colors or so these are the iron colors so I use now this so I, I activate now the painting and at the side menu um, no intensity so so I brush here without displacement and you can apply such um, things here. So when I need a little bit displacement, no problem. And the scaling. Maybe like this, too much. Yeah. Okay, then a few other things here. Um, I have to search, so maybe such um, such a rainbow effect here, so to burn it a little bit, or so such patina. Let's see what this does to make it look like a little bit like worn. Thing. And it's also possible to change here the stroke mode, uh, maybe to dot. So then um, you can brush here along with the whole thing. Change the intensity and change the 
the stroke intensity so maybe maybe like this here and then when you brush a little bit get such worn effects or there are also such here is rust so let's see what rust does so here such a rusty egg edge <laughs> not an egg uh, like this here and with a with a delete layer tool here intensity slider and um, yeah on which layer we are so I thought we brushed the other thing on the other layer so yeah like this then let's try another thing here uh, we are on the wrong tool so I have to use this tool here and let's try so here are such things like veins so let's create a new layer and we have to change the stroke mode uh, to log radius so I don't see anything here the paint intensity Sorry, I have to play a little bit with it. Um, uh, here, here are the the things. So maybe see the preview. Yeah, here are the veins. So they are very slightly here on the thing here, and so the intensity is much too high. So such a lower intensity and I hope you see it here so they appear then such vain things and yeah I think there's also uh, I made a few organic LMO organic things here um, What's this bacteria? Grass. So let's see what happens here with this one. So such effects here. Okay, so it's it only about the workflow so the, um, the interesting thing is here the face groups make face groups and different parts of the mesh here and yeah. have fun with nomad sculpt that's it ciao